Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you like any of the videos, you like what you're hearing, you like what you're seeing, please hit the like button, subscribe button, share it out. Here we talk any sports, but it's been mainly football. We get some great coaches on here. Um, anybody that wants to come on and talk some ball, you guys got an offensive play you like, offense you just want to talk about, defense, a drill, anything unique you do, or if it's just as simple as ever, and you want to come on here and present it or talk, Please reach out. I love talking ball. I love meeting people and building these relationships. I'm having fun. Uh, so please share this out. Let's get this growing. I appreciate all of you, and I hope you enjoy the channel. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the show. Um, I didn't get a chance to do my college football or my Chicago Bears recap, excuse me, um, because I think I had to sit on it for a little bit. They just played the Los Angeles Rams back on Monday Night Football. It was quite ugly. It was very difficult to be a Bears fan, so I think I had to sit on it for a little bit um, before getting on here and talking about it. I had to really put it stool. Um, but before I really get on my rant about what I actually thought, um, I appreciate everybody that's liked the, the, this the show, and I, I appreciate people that have been on here, shared it out. Um, so let's continue to do that. I've got some great coaches on here. I've got some different topics that I talk about. And, um, yeah, so again, anybody ever wants to come on, you know, let me know. We'll, we'll, we will make it happen, and I appreciate everybody. Um, again, I'm really fortunate enough to have a upgraded setup, upgraded microphone stuff, so I'm really appreciative of that. Um, so it's slowly growing. Um, so uh, we'll get right into this. I'm a little late on this. Um, we'll be on the lookout for college football recaps on Sundays, try to get back into doing that. And uh, I'll try to do the Chicago – Bears recaps as soon as I can, but you know, life happens and everything. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into the debacle that happened on Monday Night Football with the Chicago Bears. I don't know why I picked the best teams to be a fan of. Um, so some of the stuff of stats I'll give you, but a lot of it's from my own personal things from watching it. Um, Los Angeles Rams gave the beat down to the Bears 24 to 10. It shouldn't have even been that close. Um, Bears only had three points at halftime. They didn't score again until the fourth quarter. Um, the defense did what they could, but again, when your offense puts your defense in a situation that it's it's continue, that's what being a Bears fan is. It's it's we have good defense. We have good a lot of things. You know, we're a defensive team. We've always been a defensive team, but at the same time, there's got to be an opportunity at some point where our offense has to be picked up exactly the same as our defense. The defense can only do so much. You know, we had the defense from 2018, maybe a little bit better, but some of these guys that were on that team, they're aging, they're, you know, doing, they're getting a little older, and so it's hard to do this. And, you know, uh, one thing I noticed, Sean McVay started to do a lot of up-tempo stuff, try to get Jared Goff out of pocket. Jared Goff, you know, ran a little bit, and they tried to do wide, wide receiver runs, which he's always done, but the Bears, they did up-tempo. They would, as soon as a play happened, good. And then you notice that as soon as they got positivity on a play, they were right back up and running the ball. And especially when Sean McVay would come out in um, a certain package where he has some big people, but they're athletic and um, could do what he wanted. If they got a positive play out of it, especially if it was like a 12-yard gain at least, and the Bears had their big-time personnel on there, they would immediately come up to the line and not give the Bears the opportunity to sub and do some of those things. And so that's what I really noticed that if you want to say is a weakness with the Bears' defense, that could possibly be it. I know that some were hurting, some were, you know, got some bumps and bruises on them and everything. Um, it's kind of what I saw on them from the Bears' offense. Again, it's very stagnant. Um, the times where we did well – was when Nick Foles, and again, I'm going to say this again. I'm not questioning some of the, the coaches because they know they forgot more football than I ever know. There's a reason why they're in the, in the NFL. People are starting to really criticize Matt Nagy, and, and I'm one of those people I kind of criticize a little bit. I just think that I, I'm not sure who's calling plays. You know, they have an offense coordinator, but I think – you know, Matt Nagy's calling plays, but I think we're getting too stagnant. I think that in the NFL, especially with a guy like Nick Foles, who's been around, won a Super Bowl, I'm not saying Nick Foles has to be the offense coordinator, but there's times where the Bears did move the ball, and the times they did is because they did do their own little, you know, huddle. And 
they he was up there checking plays and this and that, and it did pretty good. And then then there was times where you could kind of tell if Matt Nagy was the one calling plays. Now, I'm not saying that he can't call plays. I'm not saying this. I'm not saying that. But I was talking to my friend, Coach West, who, I, who was on here. We were messaging back and forth and saying, um, you know, you bring Matt Nagy over thinking that you're going to have this Andy Reid offense. And, you know, he, he made a good point. He said, you know, you expect – I'm paraphrasing um, – they expect to have the same um, result out of the kitchen without the chef. And I don't care what anybody says. Andy Reid calls a lot of the plays over there in Kansas City. And I don't care what anybody says who says he's the offense coordinator. He, he's calling the plays or he is having his fingerprints all over. And they need to get over that. So Matt Nagy, there's times where you could tell he called plays. And the time where I got frustrated with him calling plays was they, we were on the in the red zone – and our red zone threat has been uh, Jimmy Graham. And I don't care what people say of his decline or, you know, this, this, or that. He is our red zone threat. And, you know, regardless of what people think or regardless of their opinion, that's the, that's the honest truth. And so he comes out of the game, and, and I remember me and, and Nathan were messaging, and we were like, are you seeing what I'm seeing? And they took him out. And first of all, it cost me money because I had Jimmy Graham scoring any time to win me some money. So Matt Nagy, you owe me some money. I think you you, you did that to me. Um, he, he's a red zone threat. And so a couple of different ways as a coach, you put him in and that's who they're going to focus on. Um, or he, he's going to score. So it's one of those things where he, he's going to draw an eye of a second defender. Um He's a big boy. It looks like when he's down in the red zone, like he's posting up to play basketball. And so that's kind of where I don't understand it. Um, another guy, I, we have another time stepping up. Um, I'm not going to be able to say his last name, Cole Nett. You know, um, I think he's the rookie. He had he, he had two catches for 45 yards and averaged 22 yards a catch. And um, he's only targeted twice, caught twice. So I know that, you know, according to Jimmy Graham, who had five catches for 31 yards, um, he's another threat. So, you know, again, and I went back, I've said this before, man, continue to say it till I, till the cows come home and, and, and all that good stuff. We need to be able to run the freaking football. You go all off season and, and you're basing this off of, um, Mitchell Trubisky, who doesn't have a lot of trust in him, but you know, he's going to start her. You've, you've made this offense based on running the football, doing play actions, um, and all that stuff. And, I think that the team could still be built around Mitchell Trubisky because if you got him outside the pocket more and did all that good stuff, I think it'd be okay. But now you have Nick Foles, who is not a runner. Um, he can scoot a little bit, but he's not a runner. And you can still run the freaking football. You have all these tight ends. You could still get, like, it looks like right here we had 49 yards rushing. Uh, David Montgomery carried the ball 14 times for 48 yards. Um, Patterson carried the ball for three times for one yard. Um, so it looks like we're doing more of a passing attack. We can get the run game going. And so when, when Nick Foles is up there, you know, doing no huddle, checking the play at the line, seeing what the defense is doing, did good. And then Matt Nagy wanted to slow it down. We took Jimmy Graham out. We don't have an end zone threat, and we throw an interception. Now Nick Foles threw a bad ball, but you're, you're putting him in a situation where that's not going to work. You know, we're, we're built on running the ball. Um, or built on play action. You get the you get some run plays going, get some play actions, um, and we're not doing that. And I, I don't know why. I don't. I do not understand what's going on. I'm not trying to say that I would call better offense, but from the outside looking in, even from a coach's perspective, of you've got to use your guys. So if you got Jimmy Graham, you got this Cole kid. Cole, I'm just gonna say Cole Nett. If I say it wrong, I apologize. Who? is starting to catch the ball, he's starting to come on, he's starting to become this big thing all of a sudden, and 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 you could do that, you know. And, and now Nick Foles did throw two interceptions. One, I think, was near the end of the game, and then that one that he threw because it was just a horrible play. I don't know what what, what it was. He threw a horrible ball. But he, I don't know if he had any confidence in the guys that were down there. There was no Jimmy Graham. There was no this. They weren't trying to run the ball. They weren't doing this. They weren't doing that. It's very stagnant. And I think that Matt Nagy, if he's going to continue to call plays, needs to just kind of go home. That thing that he has on there says BU, he needs to be him. You know, that 2018 offense was fun to watch. You know, they did some funky offenses or uh, formations. They, they were able to do their same run stuff, their same passes out of it. They got Mitchell Trubisky outside the box. They did some zone reads. They did some power reads because that's what uh, Mitchell Trubisky could do. 
Now you have a guy, Nick Foles, who's a pocket passer who can manage the line of scrimmage. So you could probably give him two plays and say, okay, here's a play, but check to this. And I think he and Nick Foles need to sit down and say, okay, Nick, you're not the, you're not the offense coordinator. I am. I'm the head coach. You know, we're going to do what I say. But at the end of the day, you're, you can't sit there and tell me that Tom Brady didn't have conversations with um, Daniels and didn't have conversations with Bill Belichick and did not have this things going on to say, this is what I'm seeing on offense. This is what we can do. Um, so I think Mike Nagy really needs to sit down and talk to him and say, okay, if you're the quarterback going forward, what are you seeing? We need to have a conversation. Um, we need to be able to do this. We need to be able to do that. And, you know, then I think that even Nick Foles is going to tell you, yeah, he may want to throw it a lot, but he's going to have to get, they have to get back to running the football. You built the offense to be able to run the football. And I know there's some injuries. David Montgomery can run. Cornell Patterson can run. I know he's a wide receiver threat, but you can't tell me if you can't get him running the ball, get some perimeter stuff, we'll be okay. Now, I know the other topic is the offensive line. We had a couple injuries. Offensive line is also struggling. So I'm not trying to put this all on Matt Nagy and, and Nick Foles and, and the decision-making and all that. But um, not trying to put on them, but the offensive line is struggling. There's times where the run game, that it's embarrassing. They didn't want to eh. – they, they would go to block somebody. They had their head down. They weren't moving their feet. They weren't getting their hands on somebody. They're trying to do the shoulder block, which I can't stand. And they looked like they were afraid to block. Um, the Rams defensive line. I know Aaron Donald is a monster, but you have to game plan. Maybe that's who you read. You're in the NFL. You can't tell me you can't read a three technique. You can't tell me you trap him. You can't tell me that just double team him. You're in the NFL, Chicago Bears. Like you should be able to double team somebody. If we as high school coaches can get our kids to double team, if we can figure out that when we have to do a read play, let's read. Sometimes I know sometimes in high school it may sound a little difficult, but a lot of times you read the end. But who's to say that? We on this particular play say, hey, or this week we know, hey, this guy's going to line up in a three tech. Let's read him on our zone. If we got a guy that's out, you know, whatever, or trap him out of high school, get a quick trap, get your head. You don't have to kill him. It's not a kill shot. So the Chicago Bears have some offensive line issues that they need to figure out. And in the draft, they got to get some offensive linemen. I think that you get a couple skilled guys, you get the offensive line fixed, we can have a good offense. We already have a good defense, but they're aging, and that's the problem. Defenses are trying to keep up with these offenses. And I don't know if Matt Nagy's like, oh, we got a defense that can do this. We're going to win ugly, which is fine. But you got to put up more than 10 points. That last touchdown, I don't even know if you want to count it. But, you know, so technically you have one touchdown. You only have three points. And we just have a stagnant offense. I think Matt Nagy, before they play the Saints, needs to reevaluate and say, what did I do in 2018? Maybe he needs to call Andy Reid and say, how do you do this? How do you do that? And really focus on what they can do. I know they're in the NFL, and there's a certain way to go about doing it, and they have to adapt. But at the same time, you can't forget that when you're coaching adults, you're coaching teenagers, you're coaching whatever, that you have to do what they can do. So with Nick Foles, like I said, and I'm going to tell you how they survive and how they can go back to winning and get some offense is clock management, keep your defense on the sideline because our defense is aging. And there's some bumps and bruises. Um, and I think they're on the field too much. They're starting to get a lot of penalties. So they're playing, the defense play a little sloppy. So I understand that. But at the same time, you have to be able to run the football. You know, you have all these tight ends and everything. You need to run the ball. You need to get some play actions and short passes. And then I think that once you start doing that, we need some more shots down the field. When you watch, we're not taking accurate shots down the field. We can a little bit, but not as much. But we're going to be that type of offense that needs to run the ball to suck everybody in, and then we do some short passes, short speed outs, and then we can start taking shots down the field. Nick Foles does not have a weak arm. He can throw the ball, maybe not as strong as some, but he does have a strong arm. He has a good release. He has good footwork. He has good mechanics. So I think that you need to – Matt Nagy needs to give Nick Foles some rain a little bit. They need to get on the same page. They need to help each other out. Nick Foles is not an offense coordinator, but he sees what's happening on the field able to check to something and then play to your strengths. You have Jimmy Graham, who is your red zone threat. Why well, would you check him out of the game? Um, defensively, they need to quit the freaking penalties because that what's killed. It was hands to the face. It was roughing the passer. It was this, it was that. It was holding uh, pass interference. So they had a lot of penalties or a decent amount. And, you know, the turnovers from Nick Foles did happen, but at the end of the game when they were trying to come back, uh, you can't blame him, but you can at the same time, I think. Um, 
And then when, when, and then first down, the Rams had 24 and the Bears had 14. So there's, there's uh, proof right there. Um, Jared Goff was 23 of 33 for uh, for 220 yards and two touchdowns, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, it was it was a rough time, and and it's getting quite quite frustrating. When I'm not saying Matt Nagy needs I'm not saying Matt Nagy needs to be fired, but he's going to be on the hot seat because we expect a lot as Bears fans. And when you've got talent and you built this around, like there's 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 something that's got to give. Um. The Bears had uh, six penalties for 46 yards, but it just seemed like their their penalties came at bad times. The Rams held the ball more, so I think the Bears need to run the football. They need to find some people to run the football, whether it's with wide receivers, their running backs, whatever the case is, that's what they have to do. I think they need to start going to play actions, doing short passes, some play actions, and then they can start taking shots down the field. But until they do that, I don't know if this offense, you know, when you play – Play, playing in teams with your defense, it works and it can get you some wins. I mean, they're sitting at five and two. They're three and one. Um, or sorry, they're five and two, and then the and then the Los Angeles Rams are five and two too. Excuse me. Um, so when you play good teams like the Rams, th- this type of stuff is not going to work. Uh, when you start playing really really good teams. And if you just if you get into the playoffs, whether it's wild card or we win the the, the um, NFC North, if we win the NFC North, that means they figured out the offense. But we've seen this before in 2006, where we just kind of coasted. We had our defense. We had an a quarterback in Rex Grossman who did just enough to win the game. And then now you're kind of seeing the same thing. But other teams are really good now, and they have some good teams, and they're figuring out. I think a weakness of the defense that we saw is when you go up tempo. Um, not, not 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 the whole time, but if you get a big yard, not saying if they get three yards on that play, they're going to do up tempo. But if they get ten yards, they get eight yards and a first down, and they do up tempo because they see something they like. You you may see some teams start doing some up tempo stuff, getting their quarterback outside the pocket when they go up tempo. Um, I think that's the weakness of the Bears defense a little bit. If you saw that, um, it just didn't like they wanted to be there either. I think the defense is going to slowly start getting frustrated with the offense, which is never a good thing. They have to be on the same page. They have to be as a team, be one. And I think Mac Nagy needs to have a coming to Jesus moment. I think Nick Foles needs to just go into his office and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm working with you. I'm trying the best I can. But this is what I'm seeing on the field. This is what I'm seeing on film. This is this is kind of what we need to do. And we – I don't think we can be this this passing team. We have to be able to set up the pass. You know, people talk to me about, to me about being a spread coach and, and being loving the pass, which I do, but I, I understand I want to run the ball too. And I think if they start running the ball and they start, you know, able to do that, they're able to get some quick screens or able to do this, they'll be okay. Now, at the end of the day, the offensive line needs to have a coming to Jesus moment and say, I'm tired of seeing guys on the ground when they try to block somebody. I'm tired of when we have to block somebody. We're on the freaking ground. We have our head down. We don't even want to touch somebody. Tired of getting no no uh, movement and or or stagnant on the offense on the line of scrimmage, and when we pass block, we're not moving our feet. We want to hold. We want to be lazy. We want to do this. Um, I think that's that's me being critical. But at the end of the day, there are NFL players that need to do this, and you know, this is just me being a lonely high school coach. What do I know? But being a fan, being a coach, this is kind of what I'm seeing, and kind of done. And it's, at this rate, it's not going to go well. Um, there's going to be times we get lucky and do this and do that, but at the end of the day, this is what they need to do to win. So anybody, the Bears, if you're listening, run the ball, get some play actions. Maybe try some RPOs. I'm not saying Nick Foles can run, but maybe don't have him run. Just just read to hand the ball off or maybe and run a snag route or run this or run that or, you know, whatever. He doesn't have to run. So don't do it with inside zone or have an inside zone lock or an ISO and and able to do that. I'm not, I'm not sure what to tell you. Um, I'm not coaching the NFL. I have no idea, but that's the type of stuff that needs to get done um, in order for them to win. So it's very frustrating. The defense is going to start getting some bumps and bruises because they're on the field a lot. They're going to get tired. You know, if it was the 2018 defense, maybe it'd be a little different, but some of those guys are still here. They're getting a little older. Some of them are gone. You got some new guys, some, some fresh blood. And, and, then, and you know, so it's not the same. Now, only giving up 24 points is not horrible, I guess. I mean, it is and it's not, but then you have to have an offense to back it up to help you out, and that's just not what we have. So hopefully Nick Foles and Matt Nagy get it together. Hopefully 
if Matt Nagy's not calling all the plays, that he, he's got to make a decision of does he call plays or someone else, or does he just take full reign and so that way they can get this going and get this done. And uh, he and Nick Foles need to talk to each other, and then they need to get to the run game. So, like, you know, I'm a broken record, and hopefully when they play the Saints, which, you know, the Saints are slowly figuring it out, are they – are they going to be able to do that against the Saints? It might be a shootout. Who knows? But until they can establish some wide receivers and stuff on offense, the defense, I think, will be okay. I think that was just them being tired on the field a lot. So if the Bears can play clock management, go build, do the offense what it was built to do, I think we can get it figured out. So there's my Bears recap. I know sometimes these are going to be short. Sometimes um, these will be longer. Sometimes they're going to be shorter. Um, I don't know. I'm a little late on it, so hopefully I can do it right after on Sundays um, or Mondays, you know, get recorded on Monday so I can get this out sooner. So um, be on the lookout for college football recaps as well. I had to do it solo, but hopefully me and my co-host Brad will get on there. We'll go live when we do those, and you guys can come in on the chat and chat. Maybe we'll we'll get it to where um, – get some guys to hop on with us. Who knows, maybe, you know, like what – uh, Pat McAfee does where he gets guys on there and they talk. Who knows, might try to do that if we can get it going. So be on the lookout for stuff like that. Be on the lookout for other topics that I have on coaching or anything. And please be on the lookout for other talks with coaches. And anytime guys want to come on, let me know and we'll make it work. We will make it work. Don't be shy. You know, if you, if you don't think that you're able to do something like this, you can. You can come on here and we're just talking. It's just, it's laid back. It's nothing serious. Um, if I can do it, anybody can do it. So thanks for everybody listening. Thanks for sharing it out. Thanks for any support that people have given me. Stay safe. And we're going to see.